Welcome to the Feeding for Lamb Survival webinar, part one. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Brown and I work for the New South Wales based uh, Wagga Wagga, specifically Farm Advisory Home Sackett. So Feeding for Lamb Survival, does it pay? What drives lamb survival? Lamb birth weight drives lamb survival. On the left hand axis there, you'll see that lamb survival uh, goes up as birth weight on the bottom axis goes up and it peaks out at around about five to six kilos of lamb birth weight and anywhere below four kilos, it's a, it's a struggle to survive. And the most interesting thing about that there is that um, a majority of twin lambs are actually born at under four kilos of live weight. So what drives lamb birth weight? U nutrition drives lamb birth weight. You'll see here the black line uh, depicts single lambs and the red line depicts tw twin lambs. On the left hand axis, we have lamb birth weight in kilograms, range from two and a half to five and a half. On the bottom, we have U condition score at lambing. So as U condition score lambing goes up, so do does lamb birth weight. Interestingly, as I said before, a majority of twin lambs are actually born below that cliff face of four kilos lamb birth weight. So that starts to paint a picture of which lambs in our flock are at the most risk of mortality. And this graph here pretty much is the wrap on the last two. Lamb survival is thus driven by U nutrition through its effects on lamb birth weight. So as U condition score increases, so too does the survival of the lambs. However, the interesting part of this is that this increase in survival of single born lambs is a very slow rate, whereas the twin lambs, there's actually a large increase in lamb survival. So this is as a result of twin lambs having uh, significantly lower birth weights than their single born counterparts. So this graph here, this shows us specifically how a used energy requirements change from conception through to weaning. So you'll see that a single bearing ewe has 50% higher energy demands at lambing and 150% higher at peak lactation compared to when she's dry. A twin bearing ewe has 80% higher energy demands at lambing and 220% higher energy demands at peak lactation. Peak lactation being around about that 100 day 170 mark. At peak lactation, a twin bearing ewe will have about 30% higher energy requirements than the single bearing ewe. But if we were to average out that marginal increase in energy requirement for the twin bearing ewe over the single bearing ewe, it would come out at about 17% from day 90 of conception, where you can see the blue and the red lines depart from each other through to weaning. So the key message there is that Yes, both cohorts of ewes have increased energy demands, but the increased energy demands of the twin ewes are a fair bit higher than that of the single bearing ewes. Now, if lambs are growing at less than 150 grams a day between weeks eight and 12, there is actually a case for early weaning, assuming that most producers would be weaning around that 12 to 14 week mark. So if you're experiencing tough times, during lactation and your resources are running out, i.e. you haven't got much good pasture left or you know the uh, cost of feeding ewes and lambs is becoming prohibitive, then it's probably best to make sure that your lambs are, have either green, a paddock with green grass in front of them or are experienced at eating grain and then you can wean them from about eight weeks on and give them preferential treatment over and above the U. I thought it was important to show roughly what the energy requirements from pasture look like. So if you were to say that the required daily intake or RDI in the last trimester for a twin bearing U was about 12.2 megajoules of metabolizable energy per day, that picture on the top left depicts a pasture that would supply that type of U with 100% of her required daily intake. It's a buffle grass, you can see that it's majority green, 
thankfully it's going to meet their requirements. And the next picture down, it's also buffalo grass, but it's, it's much drier, it's probably lower in digestibility. That would supply about 6.8 megajoules of energy per day, which equates to about 55% of the use or a twin bearing use required daily intake. The last picture there is a picture of a, a very dry Mitchell grass plant, even though there'd be a high amount of it in, in that particular picture. The very poor quality, it only it means that it will only provide 3.5 megajoules of uh, energy a day or about 29% of the use requirement. Key message to take away from all this is that irrespective of how much pasture there is, the pasture quality is a big determinant of what nutritional value it is to the sheep. So you might have a, a, whole, a whole heap of dried out buffalo mitral grass throughout the paddock, but if its quality is down, as per the, uh, the last picture there, then it's not gonna be supplying much energy to the ewes. So a little bit on what you nutri nutrition or feeding ewes will translate to in lamb survival. So what's a kilo change or a condition score change in the ewe worth in lamb survival? A little bit of, a little bit of work has been done. Uh, the summation of that work would suggest that for every 1.2 kilos of body weight change in the ewe before day zero to day 100 of pregnancy or during day zero to day 100 of pregnancy, it would result in 1.2% improvement in lamb survival. Similarly, uh, you'll get a 1% improvement in lamb survival per kilogram of live weight change between days 100 and 150. Uh, this is very similar to, and this is an unscanned use. If we go down, so this is a similar result coming out of the lifetime year management course, uh, roughly a 5% increase per condition score change in signals, um, which equates to about a 0.7% increase in uh, lamb survival per kilogram of live weight, but a much higher 20% per uh, increase in lamb survival per condition score change in twins. Up next is part two, the modelling. Does it pay?